to the October 17, 2013. This is CISG 1.3, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. This is week number 5, and the first class in week number 5, since we lost one day as a holiday. So let's get started in this class. Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is October the 17th, 2013, and this is week number five of Information, Security, and Privacy. So, when we get started, I want to make sure that you're seated comfortably in pairs on each table because we're going to get some pair work ongoing, and then we're going to get to some kind of teamwork, all right? Now, remember, uh, this is the beginning week for learning contract number two. That means it's self-regulated learning. You have three weeks time to go through this contract. Self-regulated learning, SRL, is built upon IBL, inquiry-based learning. In inquiry-based learning, we do questioning, we do a lot of OIA, observations, interpretation, and applications. In self-regulated learning, we go on top of this IBL and we ask ourselves this very specific ability, task management. That's why when you read my teacher's message on the 14th, that means on this past Monday, I've given you a very important definition, or better say operational details of SRL. So may I just invite you to pay some attention to the teacher's message on the 14th of October. So let's go to this teacher's message. If you come to this teacher's message, you see that we are officially, we are officially beginning this self-regulated learning journey for three weeks, building on the foundations of our inquiry-based learning. If you look at these, four important points on self-regulated learning, I mean to develop in each one of you the ability to handle four areas of task management. Now, we are going to emphasize a little bit on the keyword management, because it's very important that you learn how to manage your work, manage to complete it within a three weeks period, because by the end of these with on November the 1st, you are going to have another time to submit your work. Now your experience in the past week must be very valuable. And I have been observing your submission status and I have to say congratulations, you finally get through something. All right, and so when you're going to do it again in the second submission on November the 1st, Normally, I'll give you three to five more days, but don't expect you have these three or five more days that you can procrastinate. Please don't. So the first thing you need to do in a second learning contract is look at what you need to submit at the end of the learning contract, number two. And by looking into the requirements of this learning contract, you're doing the first job on task management which is task analysis, which requires you to understand what is required in the assignment, and then you need to come up with a timeline. Look at the timeline. You cannot have more than three weeks' time to do it, so your timeline is very much constrained within three weeks' time. So starting from this week, uh, since we lost one day as a holiday, that's why I put you in pairs today, to make sure that you have a very good conversation with your hand partner to plan your timeline. So your timeline is the very first thing you need to put into that piece of paper in a minute when you do the discussion. The second thing is you have to break the task into manageable components. Now, since you have the experience in the first learning contract and you have already submitted five individual components, those five components will become the essential part in your second learning contract. You also have to come up with something like this, but on top of that, there is something more. Well, that something more will come in the form of the learning goals 
and the framework of activities to achieve the goals. You have to set goals in the second learning contract. In the first learning contract, it's not that you do not have goals, but I, do, I did not emphasize that as much as these are the exercises that help you to reflect on the learning. These are the exercises that help you to communicate with your learning partners. These are the exercises that help you to put together what you have learned. But in the second learning contract, you have to specifically make explicit your learning goals. That's why I say establish learning goals and a framework of activity. You also have to identify an audience. Okay? When you write a report, you do not just write a report for me as your teacher to read and give you a grade. You write a report for a particular audience that you want them to know something about your topic. And so you need to discover something for your audience and you have to manage to recognize the similarity and differences between what you have to write in a secondary contract for or to what you have to what you have written in the first learning contract, which you believe is an assignment to the teacher. Okay? So the second thing is if you know your goals, you know the framework of activity you have to accomplish in order to produce the individual parts in the second learning contract. Well, within your timeline, what you need is you have to come back to project information literacy. You need to identify the resources. Okay? Those sources of information you need in order to support your writing. Okay? And the second thing is you have to you have to have some actions planted into your three weeks period of accomplishing your learning contract number two. So that's why the second thing said, beside identifying resources, you need to do planning of action. These are the two skills you need to do. And planning your action does not mean you end there. After you have your action planned within three weeks, you need to execute your actions. And that's why here comes point number three. You take your plan and you execute the actions put together, you identify the resources, and see if your plan works to help you accomplish your goals. In order to accomplish your learning goals, what the resources discover and the plans set down there, you still need to come up with some strategy to help you accomplish the goals within the three weeks time. And so, that means it comes to individual working on your parts, two persons in your pair working together, that is the process, okay? So when it comes to the process part of working together, you could work just like in this class, sit together face to face. You could work one at home in a computer asynchronously through the your Moodle environment. And so we say, you need to try your very best to access your actions and see which works the best for you. You do not have more than three weeks time. So at most, if you want to revise your plans, given one assessment per week, you have at most three assessment on the three weeks time to the very beginning of November. So you look at the last point here, assessing your actions, Revise your plans, takes breaks after your task has been completed. Normally, once you finish your task, it does not necessarily mean you get the job done. You need to ask yourself, has I finished my work? And then the two of you have to ask and answer the questions based on the requirement of the second learning contract. Now, if you want to look at the requirements of the second learning contract based on what you need to submit, you can always go back to the artifacts for the second learning contracts page and you can see what are the artifacts you need to submit. As I mentioned at the very beginning, it's very similar to the artifacts that you have to submit in the first learning contract. You also have to submit the journal, you also have to submit discussion details, 
You also have to submit a discussions report. You also have to submit uh, what we call the combined report of the two topics. And then you come to the proposal, but this time instead of the individual proposal, this time is the peer proposal. And then you have to submit submitting minutes. Now the difference between the first learning contract and the second learning contract is that when you submit your report, you have to put into your report very clear information that we just mentioned on this four points, including the timelines, including the resources identified, including the plans of actions, including the process details, as well as some strategies, the number of times you revise the plan and the actions again. But these are the very important process details in the second self-regulated learning. Basically, you need to set goals. Okay? You need to observe your work. You need to revise your work. The way you observe the work is after you have set your goal, you come up with a timeline and some action plans. And you execute it for some time, review it, revise it, execute it again until the end of the period comes up, and then you collect all the artifacts and comforts and you submit it. Here comes the very important essence. Okay? Let's go back to the class for week number five. When we look at the UI Moodle environment in week number five, you discover that we have gone through the four common modules in the semester, and we officially come back to the information security and privacy topics. Now we we come to this topic in the very first week. What is information security? What is privacy? Now this is week number five. So we come to the core of the course. And with the five, six, seven weeks, we are going to inquire for a number of core topics in this course. And today's the core topics, privacy and encryptions. Okay? We are also going to inquire about the topic of web attacks and intellect vulnerabilities, but only to the fact that we lost one day this week, so we're going to do topic number two next week. So in order to get you started, or better say, review the meaning of privacy and encryption, I would like to invite you to make sure that you've got your A5 paper ready, you throw your A4 into A5. These are the very important sheets of paper you're going to bring home and type up your journals when you get home, okay? It's very important that you do not waste your time in class so that you can use the material you work in class at home. Now, we're going to go through some topics and then I'm going to give you some time to work on your peer work and then inquire something about your possible team here uh, in the second half hour. So are you ready? So let's go online. Um, privacy online, how safe are you really on the internet? I guess you've watched that before, so let us try and come back to it. Got some review. But along with these advances, the risks and security and privacy breaches that can threaten the personal information being collected posted and shared like never before. I'm actually pretty intelligent about which websites I'll actually enter in certain information. I'm terrified about it. I hate to put my credit card in. I hate to put my last four digits on my social in. So I'll form a ask for that or, or a survey. And all I've been doing is being bombarded by spam. I'm a little hesitant, um, although I look for the, um, oh, what's it called, the seal of approval. It's trusty. Trusty? Trusty. Trusty. Trusty, right? Trusty, a new name to many, but nearly everyone recognizes its reassuring green and black seal on the pages of popular websites. I do recognize that icon, yeah. I've got, uh, I mean, the logo I recognize, I don't know much about it. A lot of consumers might not know it as well, but I know a lot of them say, oh, what's that little badge? And they're going to say, oh, yeah, you can trust that site. Good morning, Trusty. This is Christy. Based in San Francisco, Trustee is an independent, non-profit organization that helps internet users recognize online companies that respect their privacy and identity. At 
After a decade of building trust on the web, Trustee has updated its look as well as its approach to advancing privacy. The mission of Trustee is to advance privacy and trust for the network world. What's exciting about that is it's changed. Back in 1997, there was a lot of concern that e-commerce would not thrive and take off because of consumers' concerns about privacy. And I think they were right. Many consumers are very wary about putting their information online. They're concerned about how it might be abused and used without their permission. They want to have more control. And we find ourselves after 10 years facing some of the same issues, but many, many new issues. What Trustee has done is really almost created a marketplace for privacy. Consumers who are interested can look for a trustee field. They can know if there is a trustee field that that website or that company has a privacy policy, but the company will tell you what they're doing with your information. And you then have a choice whether or not to do business with that company. Over the years, Trustee has certified thousands of high-profile internet companies, keeping their sites to strict standards, protecting individual information, and proving to be a valuable asset in the development and growth of e-commerce. We found great benefit by displaying Trustee Seal on our website, not just on the home page, but in various places. For instance, when we're collecting consumer information on an application. Having the trustee seal there is really something that consumers recognize now. They understand that it's important to them as consumers to protect their information. They see that displayed on our website, and they know that we take it seriously. There's a certain level of expectation that a customer has about how you can treat their information. Is it responsible? Is it ethical? Are you going to keep your promises? Are you going to keep it safe? Are you going to follow through with whatever those promises are? And that seal means something. It symbolizes something to them. One of the cornerstones of eBay is trust. And certainly there's a lot of things you have to do to maintain that trust. It takes years to build and seconds to erode. Trust has to be key to the success of the company. It has to be a key initiative within the business. Otherwise, all of the other R&D, all of the other projects, all of the other functionality erode with one simple trust event. We've been a member of Trustee for as long as I can remember. And so SEAL programs like Trustee helped websites like eBay be the success that we are today. Yes. A trustee doesn't only help businesses articulate and keep their privacy promises, they monitor websites as well and provide users with a way to have their voices heard. The trustee seal also provides a very important service. One of the other things that it does is it helps consumers click here and they can get more information about the website that they're visiting and they can use that process to make a claim or complain or register a concern. We also say is that consumers are very comfortable if there's a third party, such as trustee, sitting with them, understanding their issue on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and working on their behalf to resolve the issue. As the internet continues to evolve, so does trustee with new privacy-enabling services, providing the next generation of customers and companies across the globe with the tools to make the internet a safer place to transact and to share personal information. The trustee seal to me represents a respect for the individual, a respect of the day to day of the individual. So you're not a user anymore, you're not a consumer anymore, you're a person. It's about respecting and protecting people for who they are. People. Okay, now you watch a very simple video which tells you something about the business of this company or better say this very important logo called Trustee. Now, I would like you to spend some time recording with John Learning Butler what are the important things discussed in their company's missions to do Trustee. When you see the logo Trustee, does it mean it's a threat or does it mean it's an assurance? Okay, which one do you prefer and which one have you heard? Well, a similar company uh, that happens to be formed in Macau, um, it's the Macau Post Office. Relatively recently, the Macau Post Office advertised a special service, okay, in a TV, which does something very much like this, but not at the level which comes very close. So you might use that as an example, but let's discuss about it 
per table with your partner first. What have you learned from this video? And what are some of the specific examples you could provide to illustrate the examples that you observe from this video? Okay, you have three to five minutes time to talk about this with your learning partner. So could you just get started? What have you learned from these trusty video? Remember, we're talking about privacy. Okay, privacy. Onto that A5 piece of paper, you should gather some notes. Get ready. Yes. Ask yourself this question. We are studying privacy. How is this video with a very strong relation to the company's trustees? How related? Okay, how they relate to what we are going to study? Okay, and in what way? Using some examples. Yeah, too. 
this great back to school. Okay, we are down to the last one and a half minute. Okay, I give you two minutes. So we start at three thirty-five. They give you five minutes time to share. I have so much encouraged by many of you who have already taken up some information from the trustee through your computer, and so you're going to have something to share with us. Services provided by this trustee company. So, what is the core service that people want from this company, which is very much related to the privacy issue? get started with the sharing. Uh, Joyce, your table, Sophie, and McNally, are you ready to help us to share something about your discovery, trustee? Yes. Tell us something about what this company does to provide what kind of service? Yes. Sophie? Thank you, Sophie. Okay. Um, our room Folks of the group of the company named the Trustee. Yes. And Trustee, I guess Trustee is a company uh, focusing on people's private information privacy yes. uh, service. And uh, uh, Trustee respects people's privacy and identity okay. and provides some important service like. Uh, make, make pe making people avoid 
the hackers okay. uh, and uh, trust in make people rec recognize that online companies can harm their privacy. All right. The, the uh, trust E aims to pre prevent people's information being stole, stolen and uh, make the internet a safe place to share personal information. All right. And, uh, there are some uh, ways, some ways of their service using like website, okay. or mobile app. Uh, app apps apps and uh, uh, mobile cloud, apps yes. and uh, cloud service cloud services uh, yes. and for businesses okay and uh, I guess that's the understanding so does it mean that if I operate a company online I need to in order to ensure some privacy issue. I could go to this company called Trustee and ask for some advice on what I can do to enhance the privacy issues. Okay, so thank you very much, Sylvie. Uh, you've given us a very good first-hand information from the intellect that you discover through your first-hand search. Okay, now please pass the microphone to a table of your choice. Okay, Charito. <laughs> Are you ready? No, okay. So it's okay. Uh, uh, what about this table? Are you okay? Yes, thank you very much. Help us to introduce yourself. My name is Gavin. Gavin, yes. What have you discovered about this trustee company? Uh, trustee is the leading online privacy magazine. Service provider. Uh, service provider, yes. It offers uh, broad, simple, continuous uh, advertise, advertising, mobile, cloud, and data provides uh, okay. privacy. So that means if you're using those, those devices and you need advice on how to protect your privacy, yeah. they can help, right? Okay. Personalized online experience based on customer um, preference while well, knowing that your privacy practice aligns with regulatory requirements. Okay, that means if I have my particular personal needs in keeping my privacy when I use a particular device for some specific purposes. They can offer me some kind of privacy services. Okay. They can protect your privacy. All right. And it can create a trusted relationship between customers and other companies or websites. Okay. That means if I do not know if some company is good or not, I want to got some reliable company, so I go to trustee. Yes. So they is they are going to hook me up to some company. They are supposed to be trustworthy. Okay, so somewhat like a broker. All right. Okay. So any anything more? Okay. Thank you, Galen. It's very good. So we discover more about this company. So could you pass the microphone to one table of your choice? Okay, Tom and Patty. So, could you tell us more about this company, Trustee? I'm Patty. Thank you. After watching this Trustee video, and we can learn how to use the Trustee to protect our personal information. All right. Trustee operates a privacy soft program. Okay. Mobile apps and cloud services for okay. more than. 
Thank you very much, Patty. So, would you please pass the microphone to one table of your choice? Yes, all right. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes, um, Lexi. Lexi, thank you. And um, the song, the video, and I'm learning that uh, Chess Media's company can have the person or the company to uh, make their privacy be safe, or wow. some product uh, can keep their own privacy information, and that will not be still or another company or personal. And then there's some information and just can be um, safe and in the internet and that will not be still on that. And that is their um, and that is that company, Chinese company can be keep your system and uh, some suffice. Okay. So is it a technology company or service based company? It's both have this. Okay. Direction. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. So maybe uh, you want to pass the microphone to a table of your choice. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So are you ready to give us more information about the trustee, or you want to follow up with Nancy's? more and more independent information was well, wasn't uh, pretend, uh, pretend by hack. So uh, independent privacy uh, became a hit topic in our life. But no one want to be uh, no want to be brand. So we should start build up a real life of protect my our privacy like uh, don't lock out but let out the information for exchange and to set a long password okay uh, are these suggestions provided by the company trustee or these are the general suggestions you believe are important <laughs> it's okay it's okay yeah. that's all Okay, would you please turn on the microphone so that before we pass it to someone? Oh. Yeah, yeah thank you. Anything else? No? Okay. Maybe we come back to Chalito? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. So maybe you can pass the microphone there, yes. Um, you think chassis belongs to uh, internet privacy industry? Okay. Um, uh, chassis is in industry. Thank um, to operate at CNET program. Uh, they uh, also manage data and protect private information. So okay. uh, that people can uh, that people have more confidence to buy things uh, on the internet. Just now uh, we always buy things in Tobo or eBay, etc. Okay. Um, then uh, uh, also a couple of trustee. Uh, can uh, can also manage uh, some website, uh, their client such as uh, HP, uh, Apple, etc. <laughs> uh, that's all. That means to enhance the uh, information is not being yeah. hacked yeah. into. Yeah, they can protect the privacy yes. or security of, uh, yeah. of their website, uh, their many uh, custom customer. Okay. That's very good. Actually, their service is very timely in this internet world. So would you pass the microphone to one table of your choice? We still have three more tables to go. Okay, thank you. Albert? So in, in the video, trustee was introduced, and trustee is a, it, it helps provide services manually just by calling them and also provides services uh, in the computer. It is it helps internet users recognize what what the websites and that protects information. It also helps customers when they have problem. And you may ask why why should we use 
trustee because we tend to have like spams and random pop-outs in the internet. So trustee tends to help avoid those and therefore protects our information, private information. And trustee also is certified and it's been uh, it's been looked after by a lot of people and it's trustworthy. It, it also leads to making people think that the internet is safer. That's, that's okay, fine. thank you, Calvin. Actually, I guess, uh, because I have not read the material yet, it's creating what we call safe community to do business with. So, um, and within that community, uh, you can be sure that you're protected. Your information will be ensured not to be hacked into as much as the company could uh, provide. So can I move the microphone to the two tables left? Uh, can you get the microphone to one of these two tables? Yes. First one and the first one. Which one do you want to go? Yes. One table on each of the table. Yes. So the other one. Yes, yes. Thank you. So which table would I to go first? Yes? You want to go first? That's okay. Okay, thank you. Fancy? <laughs> they want to go first. Yes, it's okay. Fancy? Yes, from the video we know that the trustee is an American company and uh, it is known for its online privacy seal and uh, it's, uh, it operates the world's largest privacy seal program. We think uh, trustee is like uh, a powerful guard. Okay. And it uh, can not only pro protect uh, personal information but also provide the service for many websites okay. such as Facebook, Microsoft, and uh, Yahoo. That's very good. And that's all. Okay. So thank you, Fancy. And we go to the last table. It's over there. Yes. Fancy, could you be seated? Yes, thank you. Trustee is the leading global data privacy. All trustees solutions are attributed to enable business to continuously develop the company companies such as Apple, eBay, and Corpus use trustee to protect companies' privacy. Okay. That's all. Thank you. What's the name? Charles. Charles, thank you. Actually, uh, both Charles and Fancy have found a very interesting uh, niche about this company. The company could exist and do better say that's its business because they perceive in the internet world privacy is an issue. Okay? Privacy is an issue. So what do we mean when we say privacy is an issue? So let us go to watch some very interesting internet videos concerning privacy. This is a seven, seven minute video. Have you ever felt like prying eyes are watching you as you surf the internet or log on to various social networks? Well, it's probably because they are, at least according to our guest today, who says not only are they watching you, but they're also collecting your personal information that can be later used against you. I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is Lori Andrews, author of I Know Who You Are and I Saw What You Did, Social Networks and the Death of Privacy. Welcome, Lori. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. So first of all, let me just say that this book does a great job of raising awareness about online privacy. I mean, really, is that the reason why you wrote it? Absolutely. I had no idea until I started researching it that dictionary.com puts 233 tracking mechanisms on your computer when you look up a word. That increasingly, people's online self is more important than their offline self. And 75% of companies now require their HR officials to look at what you are online before offering you a job. To look at what you're doing online and Absolutely. the second stuff that's built online, correct? Yes, and 
And so, um, you know, think of poor Ashley Payne, 24 year old school teacher. She hadn't fretted any of her students or any of their parents. She went to Ireland on a summer vacation, posted a picture of herself having a beer at the Guinness factory, and lost her job as a result. Uh, increasingly, judgments are being made against us. And we might know, hey, maybe I shouldn't post that drunken hot tub picture. Right. But people don't realize that even something like a smiling photo might be used against them. One woman was hurt in a workplace accident, had four spinal surgeries, and a judge actually said she couldn't have been that hurt if her MySpace photo showed her smiling. Didn't wow. even ask whether the picture was from before the accident or not. So this is being looked at as the real self, and you know, and, and people are losing custody of their children. We have posted a custody picture. I think we all understand that when we join Facebook and other social networks, that maybe some of the information we disclose will be used by advertisers to better target ads. But to have that information used to sort of adversely affect us, I think, is incredible. And yeah, people don't realize that their email over Gmail is scanned. So if I over Gmail say to a friend, I'm thinking of getting a divorce, or if I do a Google search for old guitars, and then I go to a credit card site, I might be offered a less good credit card because people getting divorces or in garage rock bands uh, tend not to pay their bills. Wow, but who's getting this information? You know, there are algorithms for the companies. I mean, Google makes $36 billion a year. 96% of their income is based on using your private information to match you to advertisers, and people think, oh, I love getting the 10%. Do you see the points that this lady is making? Uh, very quickly, we've got a three minutes video finish. Uh, have you heard some of the points this lady would like to point out? Uh, some of the very interesting things about the woman who hurt the neck, <laughs> was taking a photo for the smile, and then when she goes to call to ask for that kind of compensation, <laughs> the judge ruled against her because of something like that. Now, we are talking about privacy as an issue. Okay, in this three minutes, very simple video, they brought up something interesting. Now, let's continue with another story from CNN. The story just now is from Bloomberg. Sure. You know, if you think uh, the photos and information you post on sites like Facebook and Twitter are safe, I think that CNN's genius are found that privacy is dead. What you post, even the innocent stuff, can end up hurting you. Dick Hart put photos of his Hawaiian wedding on Facebook to share with close friends, but when he made mention of it on Twitter, he didn't know a link would be attached, giving more than 3,000 followers access to some rather intimate images. We didn't think they were offensive or in any way, but my wife didn't prefer for everybody to see those photos. While his case was embarrassing, others are downright dangerous. Sarah Downey was horrified when a picture of her young daughter was hijacked from her Flickr account and used in a sexually suggested Portuguese language profile on Orchid.com, a social networking site. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. Downey posted a translation to warn other Flickr users, but then, she says, total strangers exploited the internet to find her phone number and, worse, her home address. We would go to the grocery store and I wonder, has this person seen my daughter? Are they here, you know, trying to find us, trying to, you know, get close with my daughter? Since then, Downey has tried to protect her private information. Has it worked? With her permission, we gave her name to Stephen Rambam, a private investigator who harvests information from the internet. In less than 90 seconds, he turns up 100 pages of possible links. Frankly, anything you'd want to know about this, uh, this young lady seems to be available on the web. On sites like YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter, more and more Americans are making their private information public. Put it together with public documents like newspaper accounts and property records and a portrait emerges. Take Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Using free, publicly available information on the internet, a Fordham University Law School class came up with 15 pages of information, including Scalia's home address and phone number, even movies and foods he likes. If we were willing to spend $100 for the project, we would have been able to acquire far more intrusive, uh, far scarier information 
Private investigator Rambam says anytime you hit the send button, your information is no longer your own. He says your frequent flyer program, movie account, book purchases, even some searches can be tracked, stored, and sometimes sold. I have a window into your soul. I know what you believe. I know what you think. I know who your family is. I know who your friends are. I know your politics. Orchid.com says it has updated its policies and tools to find and remove fake profiles like the one of Sarah Downey's daughter. And Google says it gives customers the tools they need to protect their personal information. Many of us could be more careful. In addition, some privacy experts would like to see standardized and simplified website privacy policies or even government restrictions on secondhand use of private information. Stephen Rambam sees a lot of positives to having so much information on the internet and says the genie is already out of the bottle. Ten years from now, you're going to have a choice of getting used to minimal privacy or subleasing the inner barber's cabin. That's, that's going to be your two choices. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is there's nowhere to hide. As Rambam puts it, privacy is dead. Get over it. Gene Missouri of CNN, Washington. And we are pushing forward now with the next hour of CNN Newsroom with T. Okay, now you have watched two very brief news uh, stories about privacy issues online. I would like you to try and put together some findings from these two videos about one example of privacy concerns that becomes an issue. Okay? One example of privacy concern online that has become an issue. And you can use it to help people understand what is meant by a privacy issue. You have been given many examples in two stories there. Now you have three to five minutes time to put down on your piece of paper these very important examples, okay? And after that, we are going to do some different kind of exercise. Actually, in the day number nine websites here, we have given you more than enough to look up related examples on the privacy issues online. But in class, we have to use the service one to help you understand the issues. In a minute, I'm going to give each table one minute to name one example of the privacy issues. One example of the privacy issues. All right, so what issue or example have you captured from the two song videos there? Well, the best one is you can really look it up now and read it in a bit more detail.
Okay, let's see if we could walk around to inquire about an example of the privacy issue that you discover through your videos, watch, and also through some information search at your table. Let's take a look at where are the microphones. I have one here. Where is the, the other microphone? It's uh, on the first table. So let's see. Uh, can we start with your fancy? Uh, can you give an example of a privacy issue that you have just observed from the two videos or you discovered from your discussions with your partner? You want to give your partner a chance or you want to talk? Yeah, okay, that's an example of privacy issue. Mm, yes, from the video, uh, we see that uh, uh, a man, uh, he uploaded uh, the, photo, the photo of uh, he and his wife okay. to the Facebook, but uh, someone make use of uh, it and uh, do some bad things. Okay exceeding their expectations, right? Yes. Okay, that's, yes, that's indeed a privacy issue because if some, if someday I see a picture on the internet which is yours, but it's used in a context which makes it very difficult for people to believe, that is an issue, right? Thank you, Fancy. Will you pass the microphone to another table? Yes. You don't want to give the lady a chance? <laughs> okay, thank you, Gavin. Could you also give us an example of the privacy issue of sorry? Oh, example. Uh, I wrote uh, a passage about my own. Yes, you can turn this. And I submit it on uh, Facebook, but my friend or the other people I, uh, I, who I don't know search it, uh, catch it, okay. and paste it uh, uh, into other website, yeah. or submit it to other, uh, other website. Uh, I don't know. So that means it's supposed to be a private message, right? Yes. That the message was posted somewhere so everybody can watch it or read it. That's not supposed to be. Yes. So that is a privacy issue. So who, who did it? You, you do not know, right? Yes. But how, how come people will, will just take your message? Uh, so it's, it's a surprise, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you can pass the microphone to maybe one table to your left, one table to your right. <laughs> Which one do you want to pass? Chalita, okay. Yes, hello. My name is Gerald. Okay. And just like our school, we have UM Secret on Facebook. UM Secret, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, back then there are many secret they, uh, they post on, on there. Okay. And I think some I think some some people they don't know their their information but and but the others and already post on there. Okay, that means something which has not been verified, but is already there. Yeah. Okay. And I think that is uh, my big issue. Okay, that's an example. Very good. It's a privacy issue. So you can you give the microphone to a table of your choice? So here we go. Hello. Hello. 
gentlemen, I'm Keith. Yeah. I saw the beautiful uh, video and I worry about who will be the next victims. Yeah. I think I, uh, because, uh, uh, because I will I search in the Google's and it know he knows I love Jesus. Okay. And some uh, I know some advertise and date characters who record that where the uh, couples go and what they do want they uh, they do want the profit at the expense of the privacy. Alright. But but we may we may not be the first one to know because we are not allowed to look at what they are uh, doing with our service. That is because of the privacy rules. Okay. Okay. So you are afraid of using Google too because why are you using Google? They're tracking. And and, and many uh, advertise is about Jason, but I know Jason and I want to know. Who knows yes, why they know this, yes, right? Yes, yes. They're actually tracking your lights and yeah. providing you recommendations that surprise you. Yes, yes. thank you very much. Yes. Okay. okay, you can pass the microphone to the table of your choice. Okay, over there, let's see. Thank you, thank you. Strong or make more security and technology in there, and to be save our privacy information and make uh, less our privacy information in the internet. Okay, so uh, could you give us a direct example of a privacy issue? We 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 um, don't put many photo or something privacy photo in the internet or okay. people. Okay, so thank you very much. We got to be very careful. Uh, could you pass the microphone to one table of the choice? Thank you. Magnolia, thank you. Can you give us some examples of the privacy issue? Okay, uh, my example is just happened on me. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Um, uh, you know, in mainland China, uh, many people have a QQ number. QQ it's, number. Yeah. Um, something like WeChat, we can check online. Okay. But uh, one day I found it, uh, my QQ number is just stored by other people. Okay. And uh, it, uh, he just uh, sent something, uh, uh, something unhealthy information okay. on my, um, to, to my friends. And okay. And they all very surprised. Why? Why is this kind of things yeah. to them? That means and they stole your identity. They yes, stole your identity. Yes. yes. And and uh, even better, they use my QQ number to store other uh, my yeah. friends' QQ QQ oh, number. Oh, so yes, yes. And it it really make me angry. Yes. Somehow scared. Okay, I see. So that is very a privacy issue because your identity was stolen and someone uh, done something bad on your name. So it's very bad. Yes, it's very Okay, thank you very much. That's a very an issue. So could you pass the microphone to the two table left? Yes. Hello. Hello, my name is Leila. Leila. And Teenagers are uh, sharing themselves uh, on social media and side. And my friends, she likes to share her photo or their statements every day, every day. Yes. And, but she didn't protect uh, her uh, privacy well. And one day, she says 
she somebody stole her photos and used it to post on some website and she was very angry but she couldn't do anything. Yes. So I think it's terrible and I will protect my privacy. Okay, it's very interesting and it's yes. very uh, very peculiar to our own interest. Thank you, Leila. So let's go to the last table. Leila, could you pass the microphone to the last table? Yes. Thank you very much. Tom? Uh, hi, my name is Tom. Uh, privacy is an important topic on the internet. The privacy means yeah. so is when we we are sharing photo in social network. For example, Facebook has many people can know who you are and see what you do. You your uh your personal information will be used by other people. Okay, so uh, it's easy for us to leak our personal information through our online activity. So we got to be extremely careful not to let people know. Uh, but we did, we did encounter some risk. Okay. So thank you very much for all your sharing on individual table after your discussions. Now before I continue with the very last video today, I want to remind you that this is week number five. That means we have already completed our learning contract number one. Uh, on the Moodle website on week number five, I have created a learning experience questionnaire for each one of you to complete. So far, only three students completed. So may I invite all of you, when you go home tonight, go to week number five, complete the learning experience questionnaire there. It's very important because I need your feedback on what do you think about our course going on for the past four weeks, okay? And you can remind me of things that we can do better, and uh, you can check with me to see if we are going along the syllabus, along our intended learning outcomes. These are very important. And in the second learning contract, we are going to do what we can, okay? To see if we can do a much better job, because this is your class, as I said. As a teacher, I'm trying to facilitate the learning. But it's also important that if you do not, if you do not fill up the form, I will not know your feedback. Okay? So let me just show you. The link is right here. If you look at week number five, this is the item. Okay? Learning contract number one, student experience questionnaire. Only three of you have completed the questionnaire. I want all of you to complete it, okay? So this is very important to help us to steer the right course. And then I would like you to be aware of the fact that in this week number five, okay, since we missed one day, we missed one day in the past one day, what we are going to do here is something very important. The idea of ethical hacking in this day number 10, I have given you a very good uh, set of videos helping you to understand the meaning of hacking and the meaning of ethical hacking. Now normally when we talk about hacking, it means something bad. We intrude into your system. We steal your information. We did something which is not what you want. But the, the key adjective of ethical means there are some business in the world, professional, who have been a hacker, but now they become a good person, and they use the expertise to help the company, just like a trustee, to do whatever they could to protect the system. And then they call this good stuff, and they use the word ethical to describe it. Ethical hacking means they will try the hacker system, uh, given the permissions of the owner of the system, to do whatever they can to, in order to strengthen them. And then they provide a lot of very interesting lessons learned there. If you look at day number 10, I've given you only part of it. But when you get into this website, you can really read all this particular professionals have done. 
including the concept and core rules behind ethical hacking. That means if they do something like this, they must have the permissions of the owner in order to protect the system because they can discover the weaknesses of the system. And examples of hacking techniques like the buffer overflow attacks, the buffer overflow attacks, how does it happen, and what is meant by a DOS attack, a denial of service attack. Sometimes the hackers will keep the system so busy that your system cannot do anything because it's too busy. Okay? And all the other people cannot use the service provided by your system because it's too busy. It's called a denial of service attack. And then how do you create a denial of service attack? And the different types of denial of service attack will be very interesting. And of course, today when we use the internet, it's mostly from the web. We do have some kind of web-based attacks, okay? And so you need to understand from the owner's point of view, sometimes the benefits of this kind of things uh, and the benefits of African hacking and the issue is vulnerability. When I say I'm vulnerable, that means you can easily attack me through the attack service where I'm vulnerable. So if I I just have my needs brainful, you see when I'm walking like this, you know this is my weakness point. And you if you try your gate, that is that is the vulnerable part, okay? You don't want people to do that. So something similar, if I'm a hacker, I discover somewhere in your system, you have a spread lead, then I'm going to attack the spread lead that is called a vulnerability. And how do we know where in our bodies do we have injury? We need to do some assessment for your system. Okay, so that is a very important uh, video for you to know. Some of the business will do regular vulnerability assessment in order to keep healthy the system. And that is part of the business of the trust e-company true. And um, the security for the very assessment process, there is something you need to go through in order to make sure that your system is in good condition. And normally this is a process approach. So having said that, I would like to uh, give you the very last video, okay? Very last video is about 80 minutes about the legal aspect. The legal challenges of privacy, computer fraud, and data protections. I think one of the biggest challenges right now is the fact that in the old days when you had to be concerned about your proprietary information and your trade secrets, everything was kept in, in documents and hard copy. Uh, so that if somebody were to steal uh, your trade secret information or your documents, they'd have to walk out with boxes and boxes of material. Uh, today, what could be put into a dozen file cabinets can essentially be downloaded into a, a small USB disk uh, drive uh, that somebody can just put in their pocket, walk out the door, or they can take the same information uh, and simply uh, send it with a couple mouse clicks halfway around the world. Uh, the other big challenge in this area is that most companies really don't realize that this is more than a data security issue. Uh, it relates to HR, the Human Resource Department, uh, and how you deal with your employees, the agreements that you have with your employees. Uh, they are the ones that if they're gonna, someone's going to take data, um, that's probably the biggest uh, risk that's involved is insider theft. Uh, also, uh, getting involved with the, the legal staff and knowing uh, what sorts of um, rules should be in place uh, and uh, what kinds of um, uh, uh, issues should be looked at when people leave, uh, when they're hired, uh, and all sorts of compliance issues. There are certainly some very proactive steps that companies can take uh, and going after people who steal their data, uh, whether it's somebody who hacks into the system from the outside or whether it's an inside threat. Uh, in fact, I would say one of the biggest problems here really comes from company insiders, uh, people who wind up leaving the company and going to a competitor uh, and taking data with them in order to uh, enhance their position in their new company or to start a competing business themselves. 
Uh, I think what a lot of companies don't realize is that there are tools out there, legal tools, uh, that uh, companies can use to go after uh, individuals who steal data. Uh, probably the most underused statute is the Federal Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, uh, which is a federal, uh, federal computer crime statute. Uh, it was originally enacted back in 1984 uh, as a part of the Federal Criminal Code, uh, and in 1992 was amended by Congress uh, to include civil remedies so that uh, anybody who has been injured as a result of any criminal activity that would be covered by this statute uh, has the right to bring a federal uh, civil suit. Uh, this suit would involve not only damages, but more importantly, an injunction. An injunction is simply a court order that directs somebody uh, to do something. In this case, with respect to computer data, where I use it most with my clients, uh, is getting an injunction that directs somebody to return the data uh, and to refrain from using it anywhere um, at any time which can be a pretty powerful weapon uh, in terms of ensuring that your data does not get out into the marketplace and is not used against you competitively. Uh, the other legal remedy uh, that uh, has evolved over the years has been the simple uh, state law of conversion, uh, which up until a few years ago didn't apply to computer data. Uh, in fact, the old rule uh, was that conversion only applied to tangible property. Uh, and just a few years ago, the New York Court of Appeals held uh, that computer data is encompassed within conversion, basically looking at how our common law has developed in this area of theft, going all the way back to 1066 with William the Conqueror, and, and looking at how societal values have changed over the years, and as societal values have changed, so hasn't the common law. And in this particular case, the New York Court of Appeals decided that because computer data is so important to our commercial life, so important to what we do every day, and is so ubiquitous, uh, that there is no good reason why it should not be included uh, as part of the property that's encompassed within conversion. Now we have just heard two episodes about four or five minutes of these very interesting um, dialogue is an integral on the legal challenges of privacy, computer fraud, and data security. Now we do not need to spend all the time there, but you have a sense of what is the problem in front of us. Even in the race like the United States of America, they're very experienced at making laws to respond to different situations like the computer privacy issues, they still have a lot to catch up. Look at the price line China or Macau or Hong Kong or Singapore, whatever it is. We are always somewhat uh, left behind in our lawmaking in order to catch up with the different issues that's coming up online. So under circumstances like this, it's very touchy. For example, we live in a society, we know that we are protected by laws because we know that if someone robbed me of my money, it's considered as a crime, so I can report to the police. But many of the things that happen online um, does not have a basis in the law to protect us. And sometimes when we report it to the police, the police said, we really do not know how to handle it too. But fortunately, in Macau, we do have a judiciary police. They have a sections on computer crime. They're always investigating what to do. But normally, we got some ideas of what happened. It's only when some bad things happened, just like what happened last January the 4th, when the report let us know that a civil Chinese woman from Macau government was tricked by hackers uh, through the online activity that she actually lost 840,000 protectors to the hacker for several uh, sequence of transactions of the money. Now this is done voluntarily by women, but it's actually uh, causes social engineering because of the hackers uh, trap. So but from, from the point of view of lawmaking, um, we can only contribute that, attribute that to be uh, deceptions, okay, it's a kind of fraud. But it's how it's going to happen. There are a lot of things that has to be um, followed up. So it's very interesting 
when we take a look at how we can actually protect privacy online uh, to catch computer fraud and also do data security. But many issues for us to study. Now, we have close to the end of today's class. I would like to invite you to go home and study the videos provided this week and also choose a topic of study, okay? Um, let me check. I remember I received one student who would like to share this week. But if we do not have enough time to do that, we might have to do it next week, okay? No, we do not have a student to share this week. So may I allow, uh, allow me to take attendance at any end of attendance, which will be about five minutes, and you can go to today's class, okay? We really have to involve you that uh, you should start looking for your team pair, okay? That's the young pair to work with you towards the end of learning contract number two. So Albert Adler is here, Horace is not here, Lexi is here, Long Home, Long Home, Long Home is here, uh, Kathleen, Kathleen is here, thank you, um, Fancy is here, Ian, and again, thank you, and then there's Tom, Tom is here, Charles is here, Nate, Lamb, thank you, Lena, yes, thank you, and Patty is here, Gavin is here, Sophie is here, um, Chalito is here, Wong Lei, Wong Lei, thank you, um, Joyce is here, and then Magnolia is here, Roy, are you here? Roy, thank you very much. So, um, everybody is here except for Reigns. So, may I invite you one more time to complete the student experience questionnaire before the end of today? which is located in week number five, and I'm going to see you next Monday, okay? Please make sure you catch every chance to do a sharing next week. I'm going to send out a call for signing up, sharing later this evening, okay? Thank you very much. We're going to keep working like this, pair by pair, at least for two more weeks, okay? So that's it for today, CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy, on October the 17th, 2013.